Um, first of all, my first question is who bribed Hunter Biden to be here today? That's my first question. Um, second question, you are the epitome of white privilege, coming into the Oversight Committee, spitting in our face, ignoring a congressional subpoena to be deposed. What are you afraid of? You have no balls to come up here and... M Mr. Chairman, point of inquiry. Mr. Chairman, um, if the, the lady recognized, if, if, no, no, if the general lady wants to hear from Hunter Biden, Biden, we can hear from him right now, Mr. And Chairman. Let's take a vote president. and hear from I'm Hunter speaking. Biden. What are, are you afraid of? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Order, order, order. Are women allowed to speak in here or no? Are women allowed to speak in here or no? Because you keep interrupting me. I'll interrupt the chairman. You keep interrupting. I don't know that he's a lady. Let's take a vote and hear from Hunter Biden. Are women allowed to speak in here or no? Are women allowed to speak in here or no? Because you keep interrupting me. I'll interrupt the chairman. I don't know that he's a lady. I think that that Hunter Biden should be arrested right here, right now, and go straight to jail. That was Congresswoman. Uh, Nancy Mays yesterday as Hunter Biden sat arrogantly in the front of the viewing area of that congressional hearing. Let's get to our next guest. Hans von Spakovsky with us right now, the senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation, a former FEC commissioner and a DOJ lawyer. Hans, when you saw the news or if you saw it live, Hunter Biden just walking in and sitting down for 10 minutes or so and then getting up and leaving in the middle of the hearing. What would you think about all of that? Well, I was just thinking about how how arrogant he is and how he was basically trumpeting his defiance of um, Congress. And, and we all know why that is. And it's because he knows that even if the House votes to hold him in contempt and and the committee did that on Wednesday, he knows that. His father's Justice Department is not going to enforce that contempt citation against him. And that's what has to happen. You know, uh, once once Congress, one of the houses, holds you in contempt, that's, that is a criminal violation of federal law. But in order for you to be prosecuted for that, the Justice Department has to take up the case. And this Justice Department uh, has a, a history under Democratic administrations, that they will not enforce contempt citations against Democrats. And anybody who doubts that, just remember what happened with Lois Lerner, right? Former head of the IRS, who was held in contempt for refusing to answer questions about her targeting of conservative organizations. And when that was sent over to the White House, the White House refused to enforce it. We're speaking with Hans von Spakovsky with the Heritage Foundation right now. The idea that uh, Hunter Biden should come in and sit for a private deposition is not outside of the norm, normal order of things, as I understand no. it, when it comes to congressional hearings. Now, we've also seen, and when we talk about this on our show, we get a lot of comments about uh, other people like Jim Jordan and Mark Meadows, among other people who have said no to subpoenas before. And when that happened, the Democrats threw a fit about it. They said this is the natural order of things. They threw the book at Peter Navarro and Steve Bannon for doing that's, what Hunter that's, Biden that's is doing right. right now. So instead of just always having a situation like this come up and being able to point and say, yeah, but, and, and doing the whataboutisms from the other side, what is the standard operating procedure and where have there been inconsistencies in how th that standard operating procedure has been carried out? Well, uh, uh, I mean, you just mentioned them. When, it, when, when this Justice Department under the Biden administration, they enforced contempt citations against Peter Navarro and Steve Bannon, sending the FBI to arrest them. Um, the, the Obama administration, when contempt citations were issued against Lois Lerner at the IRS and for the first time in U.S. history against an attorney general, Eric Holder, they refuse to enforce the law. So that, that shows you the double standard. By the way, I could tell you this. Um, if at that hearing on Wednesday, the, um, the chairman of the committee, Jim Jordan, had said, you, you want to testify publicly? Why, why, Mr. Hunter Biden, you go take a seat. I can tell you exactly what would have happened because his claim that he's willing to publicly testify is totally phony. Why? Mm -hmm. Because remember, he's been indicted, federally indicted, uh, both on gun charges and tax charges in California and Delaware. And you know what would have been the first word out of uh, words out of his mouth if he had sat down at the witness table and asked a question? Uh, uh, Congressman, 
uh, I assert my right under the Fifth Amendment to not answer any questions. Yeah, I, I think that, that the, those cases, uh, from what I understand, nine tax charges that he will be in court for today. What kind of trouble is Hunter Biden in outside of the congressional uh, pursuit to see how Hunter Biden's business activities may have included the president of the United States, then vice president of the United States? What kind of actual real trouble is Hunter Biden facing legally elsewhere? Well, like I said, he's got very serious tax charges filed against him in California. He's got serious gun charges filed against him uh, in Delaware. And if these charges actually go to court and the judges actually treat him like an ordinary American, he could end up in jail for substantial amounts of time and he could have large fines imposed on him, civil penalties. But remember, these these latest charges are only because the sweetheart deal that Merrick Garland, you know, Joe Biden's handpicked attorney general, uh, tried to get through the courts before on all of these issues fell apart under public scrutiny. So I, I frankly, I don't trust that the Justice Department, even though they have filed these indictments, will pursue these with the kind of vigor they would, particularly if the defendant was a Republican. So Hans von Spakovsky with us right now. I, I am seeing a, a dramatic shift from the plea deal that Hunter Biden almost got away with to where he is right now. Right. It seems like he's actually facing some significant legal trouble. Uh, with everything legal set aside, when you observe Hunter Biden's arrogance, which is the word that you used at the beginning of this conversation here today, uh, I, I would assume there's a political ramification in all of this. I want to play for you a clip here from uh, the Corinne Jean-Pierre to Peter Ducey about the relationship between those two. And I just don't have anything else to share. But the last time he was on the Hill, he said the president was certainly familiar with what his son was going to to say. I did say that. And here's so and what I'm saying today that President Biden does not you. help him with his business deals, but he does help him skirt congressional subpoenas. That is not even true. That that is a jump that is that is incredibly disingenuous in that question. What I will say I to you, you I am what helping the president you out. Knew. I'm helping you out. I don't have anything else to share. So I think uh, Corinne Jean-Pierre sees Peter Ducey in her nightmares. But when he's asking her about any sort of conversations that lead up to skirting a subpoena or possibly yesterday, is there anything wrong with the president of the United States working with his son, Hunter Biden, to manage this situation? Uh, yes, because Joe Biden is uh, the chief law enforcement officer of the United States. And he shouldn't be talking to his son. He shouldn't be talking to his lawyers. Uh, he should have a completely hands-off attitude. And what he should be doing is telling his Justice Department and telling Merrick Garland, who reports to him, uh, you need to enforce the law against Hunter Biden just like you would against any other American and not extend him any special privileges. We have not to date heard the president say anything like that publicly and we certainly haven't heard his press secretary say that correct do you do you expect that i i guess it's hard for you to speculate but i mean a presidential pardon could be in order here especially if if joe biden were to drop out of the presidential race or potentially lose in november there's a period of time there we're kind of the lame duck president i mean there's nothing about what's going on with hunter biden right now that wouldn't be pardonable is that correct that is correct, because all the charges against him are federal charges. There have been no state uh, state charges filed against him. Uh, these are all federal uh, indictments, and uh, the president has the ability to pardon any and all federal crimes. And I have no doubt that if he were to be defeated in the election uh, in 2024, uh, or if he wins the election in 2024, I think in either case, Joe Biden, uh, highly probable that he will pardon his son. Because if he loses the election, what can they do to him if he pardons his son? If he wins the election, well, he's limited. He can't have a, a, a third term. So, again, what can be what can be done to him if he pardons his son? Nothing. 
Yeah, I, I, I feel very strongly the same same way. Hans, thank you for being with us here today. Always lots to talk to you about. It's always hard to pick which topic we're going to discuss with you, but that's why we always love having you back. Thanks for having me.